Vanessa, you will go to Milan. Tell me about the knock-on effect or the furtherance that we've seen over the last months and weeks of the Me Too movement and everyone wearing black. How will you write about it? What is the dynamic that you see into 2018 for this moment? I was actually really surprised by how little of it was on the New York runways. I would have expected much more of a response or at least an attempt to grapple with it on the part of designers. Aside from Prabhul Goering here, who proposed bright colors as an alternative, you know, said that he thought black actually could, you know, suppress women's spirit um, mm -hmm. and they deserved more. Really, no one, no one looked at it. And I would expect in Europe that will be more of the case, despite the fact that at the BAFTAs this weekend, there mm -hmm. was another call for the actresses to wear black. You will go uh, to Milan in the state of luxury. I guess I want to talk mm -hmm. to Robert Burke about the square footage and what we see on the Madison Avenues of the world. But what is the theme right now? You're going to tell me it's athleisure, right? No. Good, thank you. What is it? I, I think athleisure is over. I, that's what we're going to see. I mean, that's you. I really can't answer that question until Paris is over, right. until the season is finished. You know, out of New York, we didn't actually see a whole lot of movement. Things are kind of twirling around in circles. I think is that what you see in merchandising right now? Yes, it was a really sporadic season and a little bit um, uh, all over the place, I would say. And I think that that it's the reason behind that is that the customers changed. You know, there was a time period when the customer was much more predictable, and you right. had a nipped waist dress with a sleeve, a sleeveless nipped waist dress, and you had yeah. ball gowns and cocktail dresses. And it's different today. This customer, because of the at leisure and because of of streetwear, they're looking at things differently, and I think certainly the Me Too movement has had a great effect in how right. women want to portray themselves. Nera? Yeah, and I want to make, try and make a seamless transition from the streetwear to the fact that Cardi B, uh, some say, kind of stole the show at New York Fashion Week. Vanessa, how relevant are these uh, twice yearly sort of, I guess you could call them, institutionalized fashion weeks in the Instagram age with stars like Cardi B, like Rihanna, kind of inspiring millennials and guiding them on what they want to buy? Um, well, you know, Rihanna wasn't even at Fashion Week this time around, which I thought was pretty extraordinary. Um, they, they are the, the kind of load stars of the next generation. And I think what's really interesting is that they represent so much, you know, in fashion but also beyond fashion, that they are probably feeding into what we're seeing as a kind of slowing, lowering inclination to buy stuff. Lowering inclination to buy stuff. So what does that mean then, uh, Robert, for the fashion world if people don't want to buy as much? Like, how is the spending changing? Well, you know, what you're seeing brands do is realize that they can't have the traditional fashion show and only touch the customer twice, um, <clears throat> once every six months with a show. It's really about content and connecting to the customer on a regular basis. And if it's, if yeah. it's these types of superstars or, or singers or whatever it is, it has to be constant to communication today. Good, but Robert Brick, this is so important. The millennial, the millennial, the millennial. I was in Gucci the other day. The guy said we're completely beholden to the millennial and all this stretchy stuff and have leisure. How does Bergdorf Goodman or Selfridges, how do they adjust to this new world that you're living in? Well, I was, I was in Selfridges recently and certainly in Bergdorf. And you have to, you know, you can't always play to the existing customer base. And you, you have to satisfy that. But you realize that mm -hmm. customers' tastes are changing in a very rapid pace. And if you look at Gucci, which you profiled recently, they've made the customer feel as if they're getting unique product with frequent drops. And it's really what right. the customer wants because they get bored otherwise. Vanessa, who is the next Gucci? Everybody's chasing this. Everybody's chasing up 49% revenue. I get that. The creative director game that you report so carefully. Can you pick a next Gucci or is it pixie dust like the music business? I think Gucci would claim Gucci's the next Gucci. Probably Gucci. <laughs> I believe Gucci, they said Gucci that forever. the other, Mr. Pinnell said that the other day. <laughs> um, no, it's absolutely pixie dust, I think. You really don't yeah. know. It's throwing spaghetti at the wall. You know, and I think that's why you see so much turnover because, you know, they try one thing, it doesn't work, and immediately they switch it out and try another creative director. But then to go from your world of reporting this over to your world of making transactions occur and getting merchandising right, the, 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 the timeline of six now, so Robert Burke, you don't do a three or five year plan, do you anymore? No, uh, you have to be very nimble today to survive as a retailer. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the window has become quicker and quicker because of social media and because of um, Well, as uh, Naira mentioned, online. Instagram yeah. is profound. Naira? <laughs> 
Um, so when you look ahead then, Robert, I mean, we've been talking about kind of what's coming out of the next few seasons. What are the sort of big trends and themes uh, in spending that you're going to see over, say, the next five years? You know, I, I agree completely with, with um, Vanessa that at leisure is over. And I think that streetwear in many ways has kind of peaked. And so I think that we're taking certain elements of that. And I think it's about being comfortable and casual. And we saw silhouettes um, on the runway. We didn't see a lot of trends in New York, I have to be honest with you. Yeah. But we did see an overall relaxed, kind of comfortable, um, not a um, uh, overt kind of uh, sexy look by any means. And I just think it's going to be about luxurious fabrics, about good tailoring, but a relaxed um, overall appeal. Vanessa, we see iconic names change. You wrote recently about DVF and her daughter. And there's Alexander Wang and others that are just shifting and dynamic. Mm -hmm. What is the generational change that you see in fashion where people are trying to turn million dollar revenue streams into billion dollar? Well, you know, we have an aging designer force. You know, both mm -hmm. Diane is in her 70s, Ralph Lauren, Carolina Herrera, who just stepped up and became global ambassador. You know, the names that defined New York fashion are really way past the retirement age. Yeah. And so they are attempting to, you know, to hand <clears throat> over power, but it's a complicated proposition. What does Madison Avenue look like? I'm amazed. As I drive up Madison Avenue, for those of you folks worldwide, it is the uh, luxury avenue, some would say. And I see huge change, Bottega here, Bottega there. This, you know, in, out, in, out. What's the real estate churn, Robert Burke, right now in these well, you know, it's, uh, The real estate has still been slow on Madison Avenue. And, and the retailers, uh, uh, even though Bottega just opened a 30,000 square foot mega store, the trend in general are for smaller stores, more intimate experience as opposed to the big flagship. Because you can keep all your stuff online. Yeah. I mean, it's become digital. And again, Nair, as you said, Instagram, I know uh, that's just been so much of a change. Nair, please, one more question. Yeah, Vanessa, I just wanted to ask, uh, to follow on from, from that Instagram point, how much more will we see sort of uh, smaller designers in luxury being able to kind of uh, forge their careers through social media? You know, it, I think it's a bit of a myth, actually, because, in fact, to keep your technology up to date, to keep it as jazzy and as constantly, you know, immediately satisfying as you need, it takes a huge investment. So while small designers can yeah. reach out very quickly, to maintain and to grow their presence solely mm -hmm. through digital is actually really hard. Robert Burke, one final question on the department stores that you know so well. How will they look and feel in three years or five years? The same, or are they going to go through big changes? They're going to go through big changes. I mean, we already sense it because the online transactions have gone through big changes for the department stores or for independent retailers that are just online. And mm -hmm. it, we're starting to see that you don't have to have everything there on the floor. So what does that mean and what is it going to be? We'll see. Um, but, you know, customers are right. still shopping, but they're shopping in a different way. Quickly, Burberry. Do they have a future? I mean, they've blown it up, to say the least. Do they have a future? It's a really big deal what's happening this weekend. It's, their, it's Christopher Bailey's final show. They're going to announce a new designer, and then we will see.